Hi, my name is Mark Lubbock, and I'd like to give you greetings here this Advent season. And we're going to share a word about peace and take a look at what the scriptural foundation for peace might be. As we go into Advent, we remember that we're anticipating the fulfilled promise of the Christ child, that everything that we hope for will finally come to pass. I think peace and happiness are two things that we pursue eagerly, and it's difficult to hang on to both of those. But did you know it's possible to possess peace in such a way that you actually reside in peace, irrespective of the circumstance that you face and are encountering? I'd like to talk about how that's possible and first share a scripture that offers a foundational hope for you about peace. This comes from the book of Philippians, Paul's letter to the church at Philippi. In Philippians chapter 4, starting in verse 6, it says something pretty familiar. I'm sure you've heard this often, but I'd like you to think about it anew. Verse 6 says, Do not be anxious about anything, but instead, in every situation, through prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, tell your requests to God. And the peace that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your mind in Christ. There's a promise there and a couple action steps, obviously, that it's difficult to say don't be anxious and to have somebody understand that and quickly say, okay, I'm not anxious. I mean, few of us ever experienced that. It's a, uh, it's a practice that we evolve and learn how to apply. And scripture is the tool that we use. So as it says, don't be anxious about anything, it gives us an alternative step. It says, instead, in every situation, and by the way, that's good and bad, in every situation, through prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, tell your requests to God. And so prayer is our conversation with God. It's a two-way thing, by the way. We speak our heart, but also we listen. And one way we listen to God is by reading Scripture. God's Word is alive, and it will speak to you in every circumstance. And so part of prayer is spend time in Word and studying. I, I like to journal. It's a way for me to think out loud and to really share the burden of my heart. So I'll journal my prayers very often and also journal what I get as I read the Scripture. I'll write down what I think it's telling me, and then I write down what I think it means to me. What's my action step? But it also tells us to petition God. Share your heart, share your burden, share your need. You know, in Matthew, it tells us to pick up Christ's burden, and it, it tells us that his yoke is easy and his burden is light. And what that means is sometimes we're carrying a burden that he would carry for us. So the petitions, as we pray, is a way of giving it over to God. But it says, with thanksgiving. I'll take a moment here to pause. Advent is a time of thanksgiving. We have received the promise of Christ. We have his word. And we have the promises that are fulfilled. When you look at your life, as I look at mine, and start listing every single thing you have to be grateful for, leaving out nothing, you become aware that we are indeed very, very, very blessed people. Yeah, we have a lot of things that are troublesome and trials, that's part of life. By reflecting with thanksgiving as we pray, it's easier to give those troubles over to God. We have through our thanksgiving such a list of the ways that he's already been active in our life. And then it goes on to say, the peace that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts. What that means is it says guard your hearts is that peace will prepare you for when things happen. Quick short testimony, my wife and I experienced a catastrophic flood. We had no warning that it would come. In fact, we were told that the home we purchased was above the floodplain, above the worst flood ever in the history of our area. 
And we faced that flood and indeed we lost our home and everything in it. We had no insurance because we were in an area that was safe and no way to be made whole. But what we had was a history of a life in Jesus. And we possessed that inexplicable peace. And in fact, it goes beyond that. We actually possess the joy. And here's why. We'd already seen for many years Christ be active in our lives and take care of us. We counted our blessings. And we had a couple moments of grief and sorrow. Make no mistake about that. And it took a long time to rebuild the home and to get things back together. But I have to tell you, on the backside, we look at that as a great great blessing. We learned by this scripture I shared how to practice the prayers and petitions and then to let the peace come and guard our hearts. And that's my prayer for you this Advent season, that you'll turn to God, spend time in his word. It's important, by the way, as you read the word of God, to spend time in fellowship. God will often reveal deeper meanings of the word of God, the Bible, in the context of mutual study with friends. Don't neglect that at all. And I pray that this Advent season, that you'll possess that peace that passes all understanding, that people will look at you and say, I don't know what you have, but I want it too. Lord, I lift up those that are participating in the Advent devotion series, and I thank you for each and every one. And I pray, Lord, a measure of grace and that abundance of peace rest on the head, shoulder, and in the heart of all. In the name of Jesus, amen. Merry Christmas.